I'm not a fan of labels, specifically ones that have to do with status or how we describe ourselves. Gamer, fan, expert. There's nothing wrong with these words in and of themselves. My problem with them stems from people's preconceived biases or expectations that titles can bring. When I went to art school on the first day of my conceptual practices class as a freshman, my professor asked us, what would you call yourself and what you do? Somebody gave the obvious answer of, I'm an artist. But then the professor asked if there was anyone who didn't like the term artist. I raised my own hand. Personally, I've never liked the title of artist. I've always felt like it's a bit conceited and that some people use it to gatekeep others out of what they do. I can say that I make art, but I wouldn't want to call myself an artist because of the connotation that it carries. I'm a creator. I make things, but I'm not an artist. While finding my answer perfectly acceptable and even agreeing with me, that professor and pretty much every other professor at the college impressed the importance of thinking of ourselves as artists and using the title when communicating with others. However, just like the term artist, there are a lot of labels that I really don't like to use when describing people, because I feel like they can be boiled down to generic preconceptions and the way we associate people. And one of those terms is influencer. <laughs> Hey there, and welcome back to What The Heck Is, a show about weird, bad, and unknown games that I can technically call a show now because there's more than one episode. While I follow a lot of gaming influencers and YouTubers on social media, I would say that I'm personally not easily swayed by influencer actions or opinions. But you're probably sitting there and wondering why I have influencers on the brain to begin with. So let me back up and explain how I got to this point. I'm pretty vocal about my passion for physical media preservation. In the new era of digital streaming services, having physical copies of games and movies is becoming less and less common. With the development of faster internet and larger storage hard drives, more and more consumers are enjoying the conveniences that come with an all-digital library. And that's okay. However, there are those of us, like myself, who get nostalgic over a time when you could buy a video game, have it be complete on the cart or disc with no need for day one updates, and even have an instruction manual inside. So it should come as no surprise that I follow a lot of fellow physical media collectors and producers on social media. One of which is JP Switchmania. JP is a super nice guy who co-founded Premium Edition Games, a company that does limited print productions for previously digital only games on the Nintendo Switch. And he also is a completionist when it comes to collecting Switch games, meaning that he collects not only every game, but the cover variations of games as well. A serious dedication. Imagine my shock a couple of months ago when I scrolled through Twitter and I saw these pictures posted by JP. Not two, not three, but five cover variations of this game I had never seen or heard of before. Slide stars. And there was just something off about the whole thing. I mean, the cover art with its generic looking renders, the show card gothic font for the logo, the large number of cover variants. Something was just really wacky and out of place and I knew I had to check it out for myself. So I pulled the game up online and this was the first thing that I found. It's 2020, and Instagram, TikTok, and other social media platforms are where young people spend their day. Lion Castle brought all the leading influence and role models of many countries together, reimagined them into Fortnite-style visuals, and put it all together in an already proven game concept. Okay, have you ever heard a concept for a game that just sounded awful on paper and felt the need to check it out based on sheer morbid curiosity? That's how I felt about Slide Stars. I mean, morbid curiosity is usually how these episodes of what the heck is come into existence, so I knew I needed to dive deeper into the Slide Stars rabbit hole. Slide Stars was released on November 10th, 2020, physically for the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4, and digitally on the two previously mentioned consoles, as well as the Xbox One. The game was developed by Triangle Studios and published by Lion Castle Entertainment and GS2 Games. According to their website, Triangle Studios is located in the Netherlands, and I'll be honest, I haven't heard of a lot of the games they've worked on before. However, in Slide Stars Elevator Pitch, it describes the game as being based on an already proven concept, that already proven concept being Uphill Rush a mobile game about water slides developed by Triangle Studios and released on March 1st, 2017. Looking at the visuals for Uphill Rush, it's pretty easy to see that this game and Slide Stars share a lot of DNA. The only other thing that I can really see on the official website are some pretty glowing reviews for Slide Stars. I didn't expect it to be this fun. My daughter of 12 is loving this game. 
Flystars brings a positive message with role model influencers, beautiful and full of good energy. Okay, I mean, I know that's not too surprising. Of course, it's the game's official website, so they're obviously going to look for praise for the game and make it the central focus. So in this case, I'll put aside the cynicism and I'll bite. Though, I'm still not exactly sure what kind of game it is. Is it a racing game? Is it a platformer? At this point, I'm just super curious to find out about Slide Stars, and Amazon actually has it for a pretty cheap price, so I know I've got to check it out for myself. I'm personally not easily swayed by influencer actions or opinions. Hold on, just wait one second. Trust me, I get it. The irony of choosing to buy and cover a game about influencers after finding out about it from an influencer, especially after I just said that influencers don't have a lot of sway over what I do, is not lost on me, and can seem kind of hypocritical. But seriously, this is one of those games that I would have probably checked out regardless of whether or not I had heard about it from an influencer just based on how absurd the concept is. It just so happens to be a fun twist of fate that I found out about Slide Stars from JP Switch Mania. So my copy of Slide Star should be here in two days, and I could not be more excited to check the game out. The problem is, I know nothing about relevant pop culture or social media influencers. Heck, I barely know Hollywood celebrities half the time. So if I can't keep up with the big screen and small screen famous people, how am I supposed to know who's on my phone screen? But the game's website boasts it having over 20 of the world's biggest international social media stars, so I'm sure I've gotta know somebody, right? Oh my, oh my god. god! I don't know anyone on this list. Am I? Am I a boomer? 15 years from now, when my children dig up my physical copy of Slide Stars and say, Oh, Daddy, who are these people? I, I won't be able to answer them. Oh, oh my sweet little wall of boblets. Is this, is this my fault? No, it's the children who are wrong. I won't stand for this. I'm going to spend the next two days researching each of these 20 influencers so I understand their inclusion and context in the game better, even if it kills me. Two days and four ruined search algorithms later. Look, I'm not going to make fun of any one particular person in this game or influencers as a whole. Honestly, if you can make a whole career out of your personality and by telling people what to spend their money on, go off, sis. Make that bread. But uh, here's the deal. I've done the research so you don't have to. And in an effort to keep this as brief as possible, here's a quick rundown of all the influencers in the game. Alan and Alex Stokes are twins who made YouTube videos and TikToks. They were charged three months before the release of Slide Stars because of a bank heist prank video they made back in 2019. Role model influencers. Elon Knoll, a gaming YouTuber and rapper from the Netherlands. Abo Red is a music, gaming, and fashion star from Germany. Professor Dr. Freak Bonk, a Dutch biologist from the Netherlands. Bonk is actually a real-life herpetologist studying amphibians, reptiles, and snakes. Like Professor Dr. Freak Bonk, Dr. Mike is a real-life family physician who makes YouTube videos relating to all things medical and was also voted the sexiest doctor alive by People Magazine in 2015. Jeff Seed is an American health and fitness bodybuilder with clothing lines, a YouTube channel, and workout program. Holly H is a TikTok star from the UK, and that's all I really know. I get it. I'm out of touch. I love Vine, but I don't understand TikTok. She does have 16.5 million followers, though, so she's clearly doing something right. Demi Rose, professional model and Instagram star from the UK. Brent Rivera is an ex-Viner YouTuber and has had some experience acting as well. His sister Lexi Rivera is also a YouTuber and they often make prank videos together. You know, prank videos. Ben Eisler is a skateboarder and YouTuber did a lot of cross content with Brent and Lexi Rivera, which actually makes a lot of sense considering that until a couple weeks after the release of Slide Stars, Lexi Rivera and Ben Eisler used to be in a relationship until they publicly split, so... awkward. Luciano Spinelli is an Italian TikToker and YouTube blogger. Veta Bilialova is a Russian Instagram model and fitness advocate. Greg and Kess are the founder and partner, respectively, of Amusement Force. These are the two I could find the least amount of information or images out of every celebrity. Amusement Force is a website that reviews water slides with an accompanying YouTube channel and POV footage. Over everyone else, these two actually feel like they're supposed to be in a game about water slides. And Gina is a Hungarian Instagram star known specifically for her cosplays, made in video game themed. Anya Wonders is a German Instagram model and TikTok star. Kat Wonders is a Canadian YouTuber and professional bikini model. And Veronica Bialik is an Instagram model and an official ambassador for Bang Energy Drink. <sighs> That's it. That's all of them. I've condensed two days of research into two minutes. You're welcome. It's here. Now that I'm an educated man of culture, it's time to find out. What the heck is Slide Stars? 
Upon booting up the game, you're presented with two options, one player or two player mode. Once you've selected how many people are playing, you then choose the level you want to play from the overworld map, and are then brought to the character select screen, and yeah, there's a lot to unpack here, but we'll get to that in a moment. This is where you select one of the many titular stars that the title Slide Stars is referring to. While you select the influencer you want to play as, the game makes sure to plug all the handles of each star so you know exactly where to find them online, and huh, what's this? Each star has an included bio so that so that you can condense two days of research into two minutes. These bios are actually pretty handy if you're like me and you've never heard of any of these people before. However, they are just a bit overly sweet, a lot like this game's loading screens. Once you've selected from one of your available influencers, as most of them need to be unlocked, and one of the 20 floaties, you're finally ready to start playing the game. On its very surface level, Slide Stars is a clone of the Trials games by Ubisoft. Gameplay is presented from a 2D perspective, and players have to guide their influencer from one side of the level to the other while maintaining your balance. The actual levels themselves are different water slides, using loop-de-loops, ramps, and all kinds of hazards to slow you down. If you land or hit your head on anything, your influencer is knocked out, and you're sent back to the last checkpoint. Along the way, you can find and collect coins, fruits, and other hidden collectibles as well as pull off flips to gain likes and boost your score. So that's the basics of the main gameplay. Pretty simple. Start up the game, choose a level, choose your influencer, choose your floaty, and go. While the basic gameplay is pretty shallow, I was honestly surprised to find that there is more to the game itself in each of the levels. First of all, each level has three different affinities. Each influencer also has three of their own affinities, which I'm assuming are related in some way to what they do. I'm only speculating because these are only represented by icons and don't say exactly what they are. So while it may be tempting to just select Alan Stokes or his Echo Fighter, Alex Stokes, picking a character with more attributes to align to that level's affinity will actually benefit you on your run, opening up paths that are exclusive to each affinity and allowing you to collect more coins or reach one of the five star pieces scattered and hidden in every level. Completing a star in a level adds to your star total, and once you reach a certain number of stars, you begin unlocking different costumes for your favorite influencer. Seriously, this game has unlockables, with no microtransactions or hidden paywalls. It's honestly pretty refreshing. Furthermore, every level has three challenges that, when completed, unlock challenge badges. The first is always the same, just complete the level. The other two, however, are specific to each level. This could vary from completing the level in a specific amount of time, getting a certain number of likes from your fans, or having a perfect run. Earning challenge badges unlocks new levels, influencers, and floaties. All this adds up to a surprising amount of replayability. I was even surprised to find a secret exit at the end of one of the levels that ended up leading to an entirely new bonus level. And once I noticed this, I started finding even more secret exits that unlocked even more secret levels all over the world maps. Honestly, Slide Stars has a lot of surprises, more than I was expecting anyway. At this point, you're probably thinking, wow, Wallabob, it actually sounds like you're enjoying Slide Stars and it's a flawless game. And let me stop you right there. See, Slide Stars at its core displays a surprising amount of competency and good design choices for a game that, on its surface, seems to be banking mostly on the recognizability of its influencer celebrities. However, despite having a handful of good ideas, Slide Stars' execution isn't as great as one would hope. Let's start off with the concept itself. While I'm certainly not the core demographic for this kind of game, and the idea of playing a game about TikTokers on water slides isn't exactly the first idea I'd come up with for an exciting video game, I will admit that a crossover game with influencer cameos is actually a really unique idea. Surprisingly, again, the graphics really aren't that bad, certainly better than the mobile game quality one would expect from a game like this. However, the art direction is very clearly influenced by the same face style of graphics utilized by popular games like Fortnite. I mean, the game's elevator pitch even admits to imitating that kind of art style, but it's almost as if Triangle Studios took the same face concept too literally. 
You can look at every single male and female in Slide Stars, and they all appear to come from the same basic model that are then slightly tweaked until they somewhat resemble the influencer they're supposed to represent. And while we're talking about the representation of men and women in the game, we need to talk about the skins and clothing options available as well. By default, almost every woman in the game is wearing a bikini, which, yeah, that makes sense. You're riding on water slides. So then, why the flip, with the exception of Greg from Amusement Force, known for reviewing water slides, so that makes sense, and Jeff Seed, a bodybuilder, so that also makes sense, are all the men fully clothed? It just doesn't add up. You can unlock more costumes by purchasing them with coins you've collected and stars you've earned, but still, it does beg the question of why you have to unlock the shirtless options for the men, which even then, not all of them have a shirtless option, and the women are generally in bikinis from the get-go. I'm not saying it's wrong to have the women in bikinis, just put the men in bikinis too. On the topic of unlocking more costumes, I do have to say, while some of the options can be lacking, I have to give kudos to Triangle Studios, as there is clearly a lot of attention to details with the outfits present. Some of the costume choices really suit their influencer's personality, like NG Knight, a cosplayer having really intricate unlockable costumes, or Dr. Mike actually having scrubs. Aw, he looks just like Derek Styles. Even the floaty designs are really fun. Everything from giant fruit to a giant mech suit to even this cool dragon with his little tail that it trails behind, like, these designs are actually a lot of fun. However, as nice of a variety as there is to look at in the character's costume designs, things become a lot harder to look at when influencers are in motion. Everything in the game is seemingly rigged to ragdoll physics, as evidenced when watching your character wipe out. Despite this causing a lot of hilarious moments, it doesn't translate well to actual animation. Watching characters' limbs pop and snap in half awkwardly when they perform their victory dances while giving you these creepy plastic Hollywood smiles is super disconcerting and painful to watch. But enough about the influencers. Though they may be the central attracting factor for its target audience, let's talk about the actual gameplay and level design itself. How does it feel to play Slide Stars? Well, not good, actually. Remember when I said Slide Stars is heavily inspired by the Trials games? Technically, I guess that's only half true, or at least that was the developer's intentions. In reality, the game is really more like an unholy crossing between Trials and Quab. The physics are just way too wonky and don't feel great to play. You will have these moments where you're actually going really fast and have all this forward momentum, and it really does feel fun. But then you'll reach these weird obstacles or something that just halts your progress and forces you to do lots of precise jumping that the controls and physics of the game really just aren't built for. This leads to lots of flopping around and a lot of the time accidentally bonking your influencer's head, which, if you're trying to do a no-fail run to unlock a challenge badge, is incredibly frustrating. Now, maybe this isn't an inherent problem with the game, maybe I just suck at slide stars. And if that's the case, I'm okay with taking that L. But it honestly wasn't just me. I had my sister play a bit of the two-player mode with me, and she echoed a lot of the same sentiments that I had about how frustrating it felt to control the game. My sister is by no means your typical video game player, but we're talking about a girl who has finished the three Kingdom Hearts PS2 games and holds her own in Mario Party, so it wasn't just me. And if the game is this frustrating for people who have varying levels of experience, how much more problematic would it be for the clearly more casual audience that Sly Stars is aimed towards? But even so, my problems with the controls and the physics wouldn't be nearly as egregious if the level design was just a bit less frustrating. A lot of the way the obstacles are set up almost makes the game feel like a product of the early 2010s when Rage games were, well, all the rage. And not just with how easy it is to bonk your head on the geometry, but also the hazards that are strewn throughout the levels, from explosives to alligators to monkeys throwing TNT, this game has a really weird fascination with causing influencers to die in explosions, which is probably why it's rated T for T in North America, and 7 plus everywhere else. Well, that and the suggestive themes. To be clear, these challenges and frustrating level design is only a problem if you're trying to get all the collectibles and the challenge badges. If you're merely trying to get from the start to the finish line of every level, then the game is a complete cakewalk, as every level has multiple checkpoints. The simplicity of the levels wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if there was more variety to the levels themselves. As it stands, there are only two types of levels, your standard obstacle courses, where you try to get from point A to point B, and boss levels, of which there are only two, 
and are the same as the first kind of level, only with a giant squid kraken monster in the background as an obstacle. Additionally, there are only two different worlds, Forgotten Jungle and American Swamps, which leaves the levels feeling very samey and uninspired. Also, the American Swamp levels are super disgusting, with the toilets placed everywhere spewing out the same neon green water that you're rafting on, insinuating that your influencers are riding on top of sewage water, and it's just, no, disgusting. To add on to the lack of variety, there's only three total songs in the game. One for the main menu, and one for each environment. And while these aren't bad per se, they are fairly generic and sound like they come from the free YouTube music library, and you will hear them over and over and over again. It just feels like, with a little more polish and variety added in, Slide Stars could actually be a really good game. And that's the thing that's really the most surprising about Slide Stars. While to me the concept for the game sounded like a train wreck on paper and I was kind of expecting your typical shovelware, I mean seriously, I'll be honest, I was expecting to come into this video just completely dunking on the game. But Slide Stars actually does have some good things going for it. It's got an original idea, and despite being built from the bones of a mobile game, feels like a proper console game with good replayability, cosmetics, and unlockables that, in a lot of modern games, would be hidden behind a microtransaction paywall, and even secrets to discover. The game is a little on the short side, with it only taking a couple of hours to complete all the main levels, and about 5-7 to seven hours to unlock everything. Yeah, this game drew me in enough to make me want to unlock all the characters and floaties. I haven't unlocked every costume or floaty variant yet, though I could see myself doing that in the future. Honestly though, I did have fun while playing the game. Is it janky and frustrating at times? Absolutely. Do I think the game is worth the $40 asking price? No, not at all. But the game is honestly way better than a game about TikTokers and vloggers riding water slides has any right to be. And considering I picked it up for about 15 bucks and for how much fun I had making this video, I'd say it was mostly worth it in the end. I'm obviously not the target audience for this kind of game, and I would have a tough time recommending it to most people, but if you're just looking to have a laugh with your friends, there are worse ways you could spend your time. And who knows, maybe one day they'll release Slide Stars 2 and address some of these issues and make an even better game. Maybe they'll even put someone I know in it, like JP. Maybe they'll even put me in it. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're returning, thanks for sticking around, it means a lot. I want to give a massive thank you to JP Switch Mania for letting me use his photos and for putting this game on my radar in the first place. This isn't an ad or anything, though now saying that out loud I realize it sounds even more like an ad, but you should definitely check out the awesome work that he and the crew are doing over at Premium Edition Games. As always, I want to give a big thank you to my buddy Goo Man for all the hard work he does in helping make drawings for my videos, and finally, let me address the elephant in the room. I look a lot different and more expressive since the last time we saw each other. Huge, immeasurable thank you to my girlfriend, who created all these emotion and reaction images. I'm blessed to work with such creative people, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Let me know your thoughts about Slide Stars down in the comments, and let me know if there are any other weird games you think I should check out. Be sure to stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time.